Hi, I'm Steve Meshagian, head football coach at Ventura College in sunny Ventura, California. I'm beginning my 30th year of coaching and have coached at every level from high school to the NFL. I want to be able to share to you today our video on wide receiver development. Helping me assist will be my wide receiver coach, my son and former Division I receiver himself, Bobby Meshagian to my right, to my left, Aaron Hingdon, former wide receiver at College of Charleston, also an arena football graduate. And next to him, Tim Vizzy, current Ventura College wide receiver, all conference, and he's gonna help us out too. The first series of drills that we're going to run that I feel very strongly about is our goal post series. This can be used both in pre and post practice and it's a great warm up drill for receivers that get out early that have some time before we start our actual practice session. Bobby if you go uh, throw for us here, Aaron if you'll jump in. One of the key elements now is Bobby's going to throw the ball to the post. Aaron is going to have his hands extended. As he catches that football, he's going to tuck it either to the right or to the left. You don't want to throw the ball too far over. Or they'll have to be forced to catch it with one hand. So quarterbacks or whoever is throwing the ball wants to throw it right to the post. See how he catches it and tucks it away. Follow it in with your hands and your eyes. What we'd like to do ideally is to get 10 reps a piece and then you can switch. Try not to lean too much onto the post. There you go, good. All right, the second set of uh, the second set of drills that we like to do with the goalpost is a distraction drill. And what we want our receivers to do is to run into place, run into place for five, ten reps, and you do not move until the ball is thrown. Then you will cross with your head and eyes ready to catch it, using the post as a distraction, and you need to catch it, tuck it, and move on. And you can go from the other side when you come back there, Aaron, there you go. Turn around and go the opposite way. Good. Good hand-eye coordination drill. Again, we try to get at least five, five to six reps of this before you would switch, at least two to three on each side. You can change the throw sometimes and make it a little higher throw if you want to add that element. Again, the closer you get to the pole with the football, the tougher it is for the receiver. Let's get another one in there. Good, good. All right. That, that pretty much sums up the two base goalpost drills. Like I said, that you can use in pre-practice or receivers can grab a football and do it after practice. It's one of the very best uh, drills to, for hand-eye coordination development. We always start our individual period each day with stance and start, especially early in training camp or at the beginning of spring practice. What I'm going to go through is, is a standard two-point stance. I'm going to have both Tim and Aaron get in their stance and I'm going to make some corrections with them. But what we like, is, as I can demonstrate for you here, is we like to have good bend at the knees, not at the waist. We don't want you leaning over. We want you erect and in, in slightly with your front toe slightly turned in with the weight on the balls of your feet. The other thing that we stress is we always want one hand up in your stance minimum to be able to defeat the press 
coverage when that comes applicable. All right, if you guys would get into a stance, just let me look at it. All right, good, Aaron, a little more erect here. Get one of that, get your outside hand up in the stance. Whichever one is comfortable. Good, Tim. Good, all right. Slight toe and lean in there. You can get up just a little bit higher there. There you go, relax a little bit. Good, there's a pretty good example right there of, of two stances. Now what I'm gonna have them do on, on the go command, I'm gonna have them run through uh, so that you can get a chance. I can check and watch and see if they have any false steps and give you some ways to correct that. It'll be on go, guys, on go. All right, coming back, you guys come on back. One of the biggest problems uh, that you'll see with the younger receivers is, is false starts, or false steps as I call them, that, that can lead to false starts. And what happens is you see, you see a lot of receivers that will switch their feet before they take off, or they will lean back, rock back before they take off. Some of the, some of the most common mistakes that are uncorrected. And that happens quite a bit. And as you watch it on film, it can make the difference of a guy, let's use the example of 4'6", uh, 40 wide receiver that takes a false step now becomes a 4'8". So we want to make sure that we give them the ultimate speed when they're getting on their get off there. So one of the things that we try to talk to them about, guys, is we'll slightly turn in your front toe. Slightly turn in your front toe and then you straighten it as you're taking off. And I'll have them do the examples right now. Turn your toe in. All right, as you can see, Aaron's toe is slightly turned in. Tim's toe is slightly turned in. What they're gonna do on the get off here as they go towards you is they're just pretty much gonna straighten that toe out and then explode as they come off the line of scrimmage. We'll go on go. Go. As you see, there was no false steps there. That was corrected. Uh, in, in one effort, and, and a lot of times that can get done, but you got to have some creative ways. So some kids can't do, you know, have the toe turned in. Uh, the second way we're going to show them is what's called a slide step. If a guy's uncomfortable with his toe turned in, he can do the slide step where he keeps his toe straight ahead. He's just going to slide it forward and use that momentum to push off. We'll go again on go. There you go, there you go, good. Fixed it again. No false steps. And then the third one that, that we've done is we actually have them pick the front toe up just ever so slightly, but when you pick it up, it's not raising it up and putting it back down. As you slightly pick it up, you're moving it forward. You're moving it forward so you can explode off the ball. On go again, guys. Go. Good, good. Another one with no false steps. You guys are pretty good. You're three for three. That's good. That's good. That's three very simple ways to fix the false step. And I think it's very much imperative that you do this, especially at least one time a week during training camp and then also during spring practice. Okay, this next series of drills is a drill designed to work on your hips, your knees, and your an ankles. We were, the first one we're going to use is the angle cut drill. We want to really focus on bent knee cuts. We want them not to skip or stutter or chop their feet, get in and out of the break. And the other thing that we do is we always incorporate a post throw to finish it out. Some of the key coaching points of the angle cut drill, obviously, is to take off on the inside approximately three steps, making as many bent knee cut or making a bent knee cut, then accelerating back out with another bent knee cut, and then incorporating a post throw at the end. Some of the common mistakes are the athletes either overstriding, too much chop, 
and we want to get it as smooth as possible to get them in and out of their cuts as fast as possible. And then also incorporating a throw at the end so that you're not just running quick feet drills, but you're also adding a catching element to the end. The next, the next drill we have is the Karaoke Sideline Drill. We're trying to incorporate two things into one, again adding a throw at the end of the, at the, end of the drill. The, the receivers are going to carry Oka for five yards, then they're going to snap their head around, working back t downhill while being conscious of the sideline and catching the football and keeping two feet in bounds. One of the things we stress every day is to work against press man coverage with our escape moves. We've used quite a few props. We actually buy some boxing gloves so that the coach or the defensive back doesn't get his hands and elbows all beat up. What we're gonna try to do is incorporate some various moves with the swat and punch and the swat and swim. And we'll give you a few examples coming up here. Okay, you want to come up here, Bobby? Let's give you a little bit of an example as, you, as you're coming. I'm going to line up, have the defensive back line up inside. I want to start with my outside foot up. I want to always attack technique to make him take a step inside to fear my release of the inside. At the same time, I have my attack arm up in my stance as we stressed earlier. My aiming point is going to be between his elbow and his tricep. I'm going to actually want to get a swat there and I want to actually turn him and then I want to punch through limiting my hitting surface by turning my body and then I can bring my arm down to knock those back arms. If they come through, I'll knock them down as I'm going through. So if we, if we went through this just in a slow motion uh, type Look, I'm going to attack the technique. I'm going to go for that elbow there as I've turned him. All right, I'm going to punch through, and then I'll bring my arm back through if there's any hand still standing. Pretty much a one-two move. I learned this from an old defensive NFL defensive line coach that I was fortunate enough to coach with in my earlier years, and it stayed with me, and we incorporate it every day. It's pretty much a one-two as you're going through. And we'll give you a few examples of, of the student athletes doing their thing. But you want to knock it that way, and then you're coming through. There you go, there you go. You can use a little foot fire in there if you want. Yeah, use your outside arm. Good. Now we're going to take an example, we're going to flip it around and let you see it from the back angle so that you can watch the feet and the hands of the wide receiver from the rear. Again, again we're going to start, we're going to attack the technique, go for the elbow, turn the defensive back, and then punch and drive through. All right, now you get one a couple live. There you go. Get your outside arm up. There's one other key element that I want to incorporate with that is we've always used a two by five rule that you can't get any wider than two yards outside of the defensive back and you need to get back on your original stem once you are five yards downfield. A lot of people say stacking, getting back on top of the defender. 
But that's another element that you need to add, and you can do that very easily by having the coach or the defensive back, as after they've done the jam, just turn and trail them. All right, and we'll give you an example of that, Tim, that he will, he will turn and run with you here. There you go, good. Go ahead, Aaron. Good, that's the way to get back on top, good. There we go. For some of you that don't have boxing gloves, you can incorporate a dummy. So you can take the boxing gloves off the dummy, which was the coach, and incorporate one that you can use from your equipment shed. And we'll show you with that. The same techniques will be used. Okay, guys. Again, if I can step in, you want to make sure that you still attack the technique, whether it was just a, a single stick, a double stick, or a foot fire, all right? So as you're attacking it, you still want to visualize the hands, you want to push it, and then you want to drive and stay as tight to it as you can. You don't want to knock it, all right, and then step out. You want to have a little contact here, here, and then stay tight. Because the wider you get, the harder it is to get back on top. Go ahead there, Tim. Good, good. There we go. That was a good example of the foot fire. A lot of you guys will have these dummies with the handheld attachments on it. It's even better. And that way you can still s simulate knocking the hands down. Although they're not as tight as a person is with boxing gloves, this is another way to incorporate releases against the defensive back. When you're short of time, one of the greatest drills that uh, we've put together is we call it a combination drill. It incorporates some of the things that you've already seen. It incorporates a release and escape. It incorporates the top of a route running a curl, then also running a comeback, and then also the catch and run, or the rack part of it, run after catch. And when you're in full gear, you can add two of your other student athletes holding arm shields. They can give them a little jab at the end so that they get their pads down low, as you can see where those two cones are at the end of the drill. Finish through, good. There you go. This is one of our favorite distraction drills because we get, find the tallest dummy we can find and then we ask the receiver to run around it at the same time the quarterback is throwing the football to anticipate a defensive back or a linebacker's drop and he's got to be able to find that ball quickly in the air as we'll demonstrate right here.
You want to stay as tight to the dummy as possible. You need to have your hands up as you're coming out of the brake too. We always try to teach our receivers anywhere that I've been, when they come around, they get good body posture, they sink their hips. As they're coming around, they always want to make sure their arms are above their waist. Too many times you see guys at the breaking point, they drop their hands or they raise them up. You want to always keep your arms pumped and keep the hands above the waist coming out of the brake. You can make it tougher and tougher as you want as a quarterback by throwing the ball sooner. Obviously you can increase the distance too if you'd like. You can make a 10 yard depth, 15 yard depth and challenge them that way. One of the most important elements in route running is body posture. And we put together a drill that I think will help, especially help the young receivers understand the importance of body posture. Body posture is what a defensive back sees. It's what he's viewing when you're running a route. We've often heard people talk that your nose is your radar. Always put your chin to your toes instead of your nose to your toes. So if your nose goes up and your shoulders go up, they know you're going to break. If your head or your, or your eyes go down, they know you're going to break. What we want you to do at the breaking point is to not shorten your route. If the coach is asking you to run a 12-yard route, we want to make sure that you run through two lines or at least 10 yards as close to full speed as possible using those last two yards to break down. And by doing that, you need to sink your hips, you need to keep your arms above your waist and keep your arms pumping at breaking point. What we will do now is run the receivers through crossing two lines. They won't actually be running a route but we just want you to see their body posture when they get to the breaking point. Go good. Try to cross through that second line before you break down. There you go. Stay low now, sink your hips, don't raise up. There you go. Arms above the waist. There you go. You're starting to chop a little early there, Aaron. There you go. Good. Good. Chin to your toes. Chin to your toes, not nose. Good. You can also simulate this in the quick game too by having them only cross one line, trying to get to a six or a seven yard depth. They, will, you, they have to go burst right from the line of scrimmage, but you can start with a quick game, moving it to the intermediate game, and you can take it one step further and go to the 15 yards for the longer games, simulating maybe a comeback or a deep square in route. The next drill we're going to show you is the low ball drill. It's very important for wide receivers, any ball that's below their waist, that they put their pinkies together. Any ball that's above the waist is thumbs together. We want you to bend with your knees, not with your waist. Bend with your knees, keeping your head down and seeing your fingers catch the ball. And here are a few examples. Bend with your knees. Okay, Tim, jump in there. Okay, get him down near the socks. There we go, good. Good, there's three in a row. Good. 
some of the most important or the biggest catches in the game, whether it's on third down, first down, or in the fourth quarter, come on low balls. It's very important that you incorporate this into your daily drill routine because you never know when it'll win you a football game. One of the most important drills we're about to do is the high point drill. One that's not done enough, but needs to be simulated in practice in order to make this catch routine in a game, which could make the difference in a tight ball game. What we're gonna do is we're gonna have one of the receivers being a defensive back and the other one being the outside receiver. We're gonna underthrow the ball, teaching the receiver to come back and catch it at his highest point. And here are a few examples. There you go, there you go. Find the ball in the air, high point it. There you go. There we go, there we go. that's the catch, that's the catch that may win it. That's a game winner. We're going to cover some of the most basic routes in the game for the outside receiver. What we want to cover is some of the details in these routes. We're going to start off with a hitch, which is a six to seven yard stop route. We're going to take three big and two small steps to get to it. There'll also be an adjustment to it. If the defensive back is five yards or closer, that route will convert into what is known as a fade route. The quarterback will either take one step in the shotgun or three steps under center. Good body posture at the breaking point. Sell it deep. There you go. Good job with your eyes downfield. It's a timed route where the receiver finds the ball in the air. There you go. One of the key points on the hitch route is that you gain your depth. You get your route depth. What happens? with a lot of young receivers is they rush the route and they cut the route short and it throws off the timing with the quarterback. You need to make sure that you sell the deep part of the route, use proper body posture, get your head around and be, re be ready to catch the football as timed routes are when the receiver finds the ball in the air. What we're gonna show you now is the route conversion on a hitch versus press or roll coverage. What we tell our quarterbacks and our receivers is if that defensive back, that corner, is five yards or closer and does not back up or is in a press man technique, you have to convert the route into a fade. It'll be a three-step fade that should be caught somewhere between 18 and 22 yards downfield depending on where you are on the field. The next route we're going to cover is the quick slant. Some people run it off of one step, some people run it off of three steps. Our preference here is a three step slant. We also have a route conversion versus press or roll coverage where it will convert to an under route or a flattened slant against those coverages that we talked about earlier. And here we go.
Three hard steps. Make sure you plant on that outside foot. Don't roll it. Sell the deep look of the route now. Sell the deep look. Get some cushion. Good, that was good. The slant route, it's very important that you don't shorten your strides. One of the biggest problems with a young receiver is that he chops his steps or he takes baby steps, which causes the route to be short and gets him inside too quickly, which puts pressure on the quarterback to throw the ball before he's ready. Now we're going to cover the route conversion to the slant. A lot of times, People will come up and play press man or cloud coverage and people cannot run the slant the same. So what we do is we've converted the slant route into an under to a five yard under against press man coverage. And here's a few examples. There you go. Good throw by technique, good job. There you go, there you go. There you go. There you go. There you go. The next route we will cover will be the out route, commonly known as the speed out. This can be run from either an inside slot position or also outside. Some teams do have conversions on the out route on the outside, they'll either lock the route and keep it on or they'll turn it into a fade. That'll be up to each individual team to decide that. We're gonna show you a few examples of the speed out. We like to run it off of six steps, approximately 10 yards in depth. And here are a few examples. Good timing, good timing, good timing, good body posture. There you go. There you go. Good effort, good effort. The speed out. It's a six step route. You want to make sure that you don't cut it short. That's one of the biggest problems with the route is it gets rushed. And then that's when balls get intercepted when you cut the route short and the quarterback throws it late and the defender undercuts it. So push for your proper depth, get your head snapped around and be ready to catch the football. The next route we will demonstrate will be the curl route. Some people also call it a hook route. It will be pushed at 12 to 14 yards downfield coming back to the quarterback. It's a very popular, very universal route that you've heard in a lot of West Coast offense terms, the flat curl combination. We'll get you a chance to look at the curl end of it, and here's a few examples. Good job coming back to the quarterback. There we go. There we go. The curl route, one of the staples in the offense. The only problem with the curl route is sometimes the receiver will rush the route and cut it short. You need to make sure that when you get at the top of the break that you have good body posture you find that outside linebacker or the strong safety defender, the flat defender, and curl around him and get in the throwing lane for the quarterback. And then when the ball's in the air, come back and address the football. Don't wait for it. The next route we will review is the dig route. Some people call it the in route or the basic cross. We will also show it from an inside and an outside alignment. 
The outside dig is running approximately 15 to 16 yards, and the inside dig is running approximately 10 to 12 yards. Here are a few examples. There it is. The dig route, commonly known as the in route. You need to sell the deep part of that route and get the defender turned. You need to stick your feet in the ground and accelerate out of your cuts. If it's man coverage, you're gonna continue on with good speed. In zones, you may settle down and find the hole for the quarterback to hit you in the window. We're gonna cover a couple of the most popular wide receiver screens. One that's commonly known as the bubble screen and the other is a tunnel or middle screen. On the bubble screen that is usually thrown to the inside slot, we will use a drop step and crossover technique. On the outside tunnel screen, we will take a big baby baby steps coming back in towards the quarterback. And here are a few examples and we will start with the inside bubble screen first followed by the tunnel screen. One thing that will help you in the bubble screen is also to be deeper in your stance. Make sure you're two yards off the line of scrimmage. Try to put your chin to your shoulder and never lose sight of the football. On the bubble screen, you want to remember, be a little bit deeper in your alignment, at least two yards off the line of scrimmage. It will help the quarterback with the throw. And your proper fundamentals are drop step, crossover, and always make sure to keep your chin on your shoulder and never lose sight of the football. Remember one key element of the bubble screen. If the ball is thrown behind you, it becomes a lateral. If that ball is on the ground, get on it, whether it was caught or not. If in doubt, go fall on it. The next screen we're going to cover is the tunnel screen, commonly known as the middle screen or the jailbreak screen. We're going to do that with three steps upfield, one big one, two small ones, coming back to the quarterback. This has become a very popular blitz beater with, with multiple usage on third down, and here are a few examples. The tunnel screen, commonly known as the middle screen or jailbreak screen, one of the key elements of that is to get the proper splits. You need to be in the bottom of the numbers and you need to sell it upfield. Remember one big step and two small and then working back towards the quarterback behind the line of scrimmage, catching that ball because your linemen are downfield blocking for you. Catch, tuck and run and get the ball outside back on the perimeter to stay away from the big boys in the middle. I hope you found this video to be helpful. With over 30 years of college and NFL coaching experience, we've tried to utilize these drills on a daily basis. I hope whether you are a player or whether you're a coach, that this will be beneficial for you in your future and good luck to you in your playing career or coaching career. And if I can ever be of any assistance, don't hesitate to contact me.